Welcome to the annual Easter Jeep Safari and Jeep Week on TFL Car and on TFL Truck. But today, it's special, Nathan. That's right, this is the 50th anniversary of this event. And as always, Jeep has brought a lot of concepts, so which one are you looking forward to driving? Every single one of them. Well, I'm looking forward to driving the Trailcat, the one with the way, way back there, the 707 horsepower Hellcat <laughs> engine. And coming up this week, we're going to have all these plus much more on TFL's Jeep Week. When we first started thinking about doing this, and the first sketches honestly were just take, to make a pickup truck, were just to take the body side and extrude it back. Uh, we worked on it a little bit more, and then the idea of, if you remember the new Kaiser, it's a very military looking box. It's almost a trailer box on the back of the vehicle. That's where this came from. And then it started to really work for us. Um, really to make the vehicle look a, a bit basic, Definitely military overtones to it. That explains sort of the, uh, the soft top as, as well. Inside, we added a full cage, so there's a there's a hoop and then an A to B bar, uh, and that ties into the shock towers of the of the stock vehicle in the back there. Uh, we wanted it to be the most capable Renegade vehicle yet. Um, when we showed these, the the online conversations on this vehicle in particular was, I hate it or I love it. There was really no in between. And uh, if, if anybody wants to talk about this today, I think this, we sort of hit some, uh, hit a vein here. I'm a kid from the 80s, mini trucks were part of my life, and it was just mini truck as opposed to cheap little car. And that was, that was the attraction. So um, there's not a lot of mini trucks or really any uh, available now. And these are the conversations that are coming up. And it's, it's weird, it's a little bit generational but uh, I enjoy the, the controversy. So. <laughs> Comanche, even the name, like we were, yeah. we were a little, <laughs> little scared about putting the name on there, but uh, in the end, uh, everybody's fine with it. So When I think of Easter Jeep Safari, I think of CJ5s. My personal favorite uh, Jeep ever, CJ5, uh, just the CJ series. And I wanted to see how close I could get to a CJ with a JK. So this is a produ production, J JK two door powertrain is stock 36 automatic. Um, what we did with it was just really crunch the body. Uh, this the overall length has been reduced by 26 inches, so that includes bumpers, uh, the spare tire, uh, the front, the nose has been shortened up four inches. The vehicle's been narrowed through the flares. The windshield is a stock windshield, but we stood it up more like a, a, a CJ. Simple swing set uh, roll bar. Just two seats, no back seat. That explains the plaid and the, the red. Uh, the wheelbase is, is JK. We didn't alter the wheelbase at all. Most people think we shortened the wheelbase, but we didn't. So it drives, actually, we've done the lightweight vehicles a couple years. Uh, there is there is a weight reduction here, but it's mostly through the roof's gone, the, the, the doors are gone, etc. cetera. Um, and it came out pretty good. I'm really liking this one. Steel wheels, 17 inch, just lots of red everywhere. Inside it's just as red as the outside. Uh, the plaid interior just seemed 70s to me, but uh, anyway. Uh, very simple CJ bumpers on it. Uh, Jeep on the side where it should be, stamped into it. And at the last, the very last minute we were putting this vehicle together, we found these reproduction V6 badges like, yes! So the perfect amount of jewelry. Anyway, the shortcut. A few years ago we did a, uh, we did a Willys wagon that we found actually on our, on our property. It's been around there for about 30 years. Uh, put it on a, a TJ chassis just so it's safe and fun to drive. I can, I can give the keys to almost anybody. Uh, we didn't show that in Detroit, didn't think they would get it. So uh, we, we brought it and showed it to you guys here in Moab. And it was a big deal, it was a big success. I consider that really, that was the Jeep station wagon, but it's really the first uh, SUV as we know them now. Um, the FC. So we found this vehicle online. I got to tell you a dirty little secret. I was kind of shopping online on <laughs> jeeptruck.com. This vehicle came up for sale and uh, it was like a, a Sunday afternoon or something. I showed it to my wife. I'm like, I want it. She says, how much is it? And I told her, she goes, nah. I go, okay. And I dropped it. And I came back home uh, two days later. I said, good news. I bought the truck. <laughs> She's like, no, 
<laughs> I said, well, the even better news, I made work buy it for me. So <laughs> I got a free truck. Um, I just really, I have an affection for these vehicles because they're so weird. There was nothing else. There were, of course, uh, Ford Control, GM, and, and uh, Ford had these, but never four-wheel drive. And this vehicle was really not so much a, uh, a pickup truck as it was a tractor with doors and a heater. Uh, they were used on farms, they were used in service stations. It's a six foot box. And then there were really, it was a period of time when there were no rules or templates. We didn't know what was and what wasn't right for pickup trucks. There was a lot of packaging experimentation going on. So uh, they put the, the driver right up over the front. I think it's actually a, a CJ based frame uh, originally. But so six foot box and a five foot cab, the overall length is so short and nimble on this vehicle, it's cool. There were two, two wheelbases. We chose the 150 because it's even more cartoony. Um, dropped it on a TJ chassis, so it's got a four liter, an automatic transmission, power steering, power brakes, uh, electronic fuel, fuel injection, all these things it never had. So now it's safe, it's very fun to drive. It's the most unique driving experience ever. Uh, and we left the vehicle intentionally with all the scratches and scars that it's earned. This is not the original paint. It was painted at some point. Uh, we had to get into it and bait a little bit. We lengthened the wheelbase a little bit, um, but left it all the character. Everybody asked me about the light. It was just like farm fresh. What would be on the, on the farm? That would be like an old Model A light or something like that. Wheels, we, uh, for the cartoon effect even more, we did a 17 inch wheel, 33 inch tire, a bale of hay in the back. Honestly, there's a cooler inside of that that's a fake bale of hay. <laughs> uh, the interior, I won't go through all the interior details. Uh, you guys will find that. Uh, the interior, I think, is the most enjoyable part of it. Um, there's a lot of fun details in there. The, we found when we got the truck, there was a parking tickets. We, we kept those. We, there are actually Xerox copies in there of the parking tickets. There's a pack of unfiltered uh, camels in there. There's an old CB. There's a, a, a bubble compass. All this stuff that would have been in this truck. Uh, the cup holder is a tin cup, right? All this, this cool stuff. Very campy, very cool, has ducks on the roof. FC. <laughs> My final, final vehicle today uh, is the Crew Chief 715. And uh, this honestly was like, what do Jeep guys love? Uh, pickup trucks, uh, crew cabs, uh, they love the Kaiser nose, they love military, blah, 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 did all that stuff and piled it all on here. Uh, so it's a Wrangler based uh, crew cab truck. We, uh, as many pickup trucks and stuff that we've done over the years have never done a crew cab, so we did it here. Heavily based on uh, the love that we get for the new Kaiser with the, with the Kaiser front end on it. Um, we meant this to be not like a, the working military infantry truck, but for like more of the base commander, right? So it's a little nicer. Uh, Rubicon 10 bumpers front and back. So I got a winch on the front and the back of it. The, the nose, you guys know how we do the nose. The box on it, we fabricated from scratch, uh, but put a lot of military uh, uh, 715 love into it. Big Jeep on the tailgate. Uh, tires and wheels are probably the weirdest piece on this vehicle. Uh, it is an NDT tire. I don't know what it's for. It's an old NDT tire, 40 inches tall on a 20 inch wheel. And we found a, the only 20 inch eight lug beadlock in the world to put it on. But that's really where it gets its, its attitude. It's tall, it's narrow. Uh, if we drive it through town, I had a guy stalking me. Uh, it, was, it was just nutty. So lots of great details on this vehicle as well. Um, Air chuffs here. You'll, you'll find, you gotta find the little green army man on back. He's actually, uh, his gun, he's a bottle opener. Uh, I don't know, bottle openers are sort of our thing. Get that in coolers, but uh, whatever. So this is uh, my second official safari. Uh, the first time I was here was many years ago with Mark. Uh, I think we were out in the sand, sand pits or something, but uh, in this capacity with me uh, running uh, Mopar Design, uh, this is the first time I've been part of this creative process. So I actually sit next door to Mark and so we were able when we started to think out loud about all these concepts that we're showing you today, you know, we had literally hundreds of sketches of all these different ideas and what was really neat was we never really had a lot of overlap and it was really, really a cool process. So one of the things that we have for, uh, 
from the Mopar offering for the Easter uh, Jeep Safari here is what we call Trail Storm, which is really literally a rolling catalog of Mopar parts. And, and this is probably something that we'll be doing every year with a different thesis and a different design statement. But what we wanted to do here was showcase all of the parts, showcase some of the prototype parts that we have. Uh, in the case of the, uh, the Trail Storm here, um, the 17 inch wheel is a prototype wheel um, concept. Um, we had some fun with the digital wrap on it and we actually color matched it to the surrounding, uh, uh, to the surrounds here. We actually had some rocks in the studio from uh, Moab that we were matching them and I told them if we couldn't get it right we're going to paint the rocks to match the digital wrap. <laughs> so we'll get it right one way or another. But um, as I mentioned there's a myriad of uh, Mopar parts on here that Todd is going to take you through just real quickly here but the interior is all cat skin, color match, color keyed to the exterior. It's really nice. It's, it's uh, uh, very capable and very uh, basically anybody could actually go out today and do this with uh, the parts that are available and with some a little bit of creativity they could actually do this today. So uh, last but not least, um, actually driving it here this morning it was an eco mode the whole time. I think we got to reflash it. Yeah, I think so, yeah, to make, to make, I don't think that's uh, totally accurate there. But uh, is this totally inappropriate? Yes. Is it totally unnecessary? Yes. Does it totally put a smile on your face? Absolutely. So um, this was one that uh, we've been kicking around a little bit and uh, decided this year to do it. It has a Hellcat motor in it. The uh, suspension has been heavily modified. The wheelbase has been stretched, I believe, 12 inches. It's been four in the front, eight in the rear. It's been lifted two inches. Uh, once again, it's kind of a myriad of prototype parts and some Mopar <coughs> offerings that Todd's going to once again touch on here. But as far as the prototype part, it's you know it's a modified uh, Rubicon hood. We've added more vents to allow for the Hellcat engine to breathe a little easier. We've uh, done some modifications to the bumpers and the push bar there. Prototype uh, beadlock wheels, prototype fenders to go along with the additional wheelbase. Um, basically everything on this has been uh, hand built and all custom built. Um, and the, like I said, it really puts a smile on your face. So, Mr. Oh, Mr. Bedick. Yeah, a lot of custom here. Uh, we do have the headlights, and uh, one of the important features is to get 650 foot-pounds of torque to the ground, you need some beefy axles. So in addition to the prototype, bead, prototype bead locks, we've also got Dana 60s under this that you can get from us today. We show you that this thing does run. Mark Allen, the head of Jeep Design, talking about what inspired him to design all these. But now comes the good times. That's right. We get to drive these vehicles and give you a quick impression of what it's like to actually be behind the wheel. So stay tuned. Every day this week, we're going to be driving a different Jeep concept. How cool is that? I love my job. As you can tell by the length of my shadow, the sun is going down, and I've had a hell of a day. Bentley flew me out here to drive this, the most luxurious, the most expensive SUV you can buy. I took it off-road, I took it into the desert, I took a helicopter to get to the desert. You know what? Instead of telling you about it, why don't I show you? And that is coming up right now on the Fast Lane Car. I mean, come on, this is as much fun as it gets, right? Sure. To take a car like this that, let's face it, I doubt anybody will take out here, right? Oh, I doubt a, it, yeah. To take a car like this and actually, uh, actually kind of drift it through these dunes is so much fun. <laughs> so much fun. 